first reading is taken from 1 Kings chapter 19. But Elijah himself went a day's journey into the wilderness and came and sat down under a solitary broom tree. He asked that he might die. It is enough now, O Lord. Take away my life, for I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the broom tree and fell asleep. <clears throat> Suddenly an angel touched him and said to him, Get up and eat. He looked, and there at his head was a cake baked on hot stones and a jar of water. He ate and drank and lay down to bed. The angel of the Lord came a second time, touched him, and said, Get up and eat, otherwise the journey will be too much for you. He got up and ate and drank, and he went in the strength of that food forty days and forty nights to Horeb, the mouth of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So have you ever felt in some area of your life like you just can't win? No matter what you do, you've tried and you've tried and you've done everything you possibly can and you just can't seem to win. So you feel like it's time to just go home, crawl into bed, pull the covers up over yourself, and give up. Well, if you ever have, that is exactly the way Elijah was feeling in today's first reading. Elijah, one of the great prophets of God, felt like he just couldn't win. And he ran out on the run, lay down under a broom tree, and said, you know, it's enough, oh God, I've had it. I'm done. Take my life away. I am no better than my ancestors. And he lay down under a broom tree and fell asleep. That's the Old Testament equivalent of crawling into bed and pulling the covers up over your head. <laughs> Thing is, that Elijah was actually a little bit better, actually quite a bit better, than a lot of his ancestors. Objectively, he was really pretty successful. This story, today's little, the few verses that we read as the first reading, is the middle of a big long story, and most of us know the first part and the last part, but the middle part just sort of sits there. So what has happened right before this part of the story is that Elijah has been involved in this great debate about who is God. Is it the God of Israel, or is it the Baals, these place gods, these pagan gods of people who had lived in the land. And the history of the Old Testament is that as things come and go, sometimes people think, oh yeah, we've got to be faithful to the God of Israel. Other times, eh, let's see what else is available. So Elijah eventually says, all right, let's do this. Let's have this big contest. The prophets of Baal will assemble and I'll meet them, and we'll be up on this great big mountain, and each of us will take a bowl, and we'll put it on separate altars, and then we'll cry to our gods, and whichever god rains down fire and consumes the sacrifice, that must be the right god. People think that's a good, that's a good idea, so that's what they do. The prophets of Baal put the bull on the altar, and they jump around all day, crying on their god, nothing happens, the bull just sits there. So then Elijah, puts the bull on his altar, and just for added theatrics, he says, go get some water and pour it on the altar. And pour it on again and again, and once it's good and wet, he says, God, you know, show him that you're God. And all of a sudden, whoosh, down comes the fire, it burns up the sacrifice, it burns up the stones, it laps up the water, the whole nine yards, Elijah's won. And in good Old Testament fashion, where we don't just say, okay, we've won, we'll shake hands, he has all the prophets of Baal killed. And he figures, you know, this is the best day in Elijah's life. Except that the king of Israel, Ahab, and his wife Jezebel, who are both deeply into the Baals, are not impressed. So Jezebel sends word to Elijah with one of the great Old Testament threats. May the gods do so to me, and more also. If I don't make your life like one of theirs by this time tomorrow, so Elijah's scared, and he runs, and he gets under this solitary broom tree that we find him in in today's reading, and he lays down because he says, you know what, God, even when I win, I lose. I can't win. Take my life. It's enough. And he goes to sleep. So God lets him sleep for a while, but then an angel touches him and says, hey, get up and eat. Get up and drink. And then he goes back to his nap. Angel comes back again and says, hey, eat some more. 
drink some more, or else the journey will be too much for you. Eat. Hydrate. Sleep. They're the basic things that people need for any kind of journey. Elijah really didn't need the angel to tell him that. You do not need the pastor to tell you that either. But here's the, here's the really interesting thing that Elijah found out. The angel says that God actually still has a journey for Elijah to be on. His journey is not over. And even though Elijah may be ready to give up, God has not given up on Elijah. Indeed, the journey that Elijah is called to be on, the journey of his entire life, is finally not about Elijah's winning or losing, but it's rather about being part of God's mission to draw people closer to God. God wants Elijah to get up and resume that journey. And the journey that Elijah is called to resume is blessed and strengthened by God when God provides Elijah with, first of all, a break. And he's tired. He's demoralized. And God understands how Elijah feels. So he lets him sleep for a while. He gives him food. He gives him water. And in one sense, today's first reading stands in opposition to this idea that if you're supposed to be doing something for God, if you're on a mission from God, all you need is deep spiritual support. You don't need all this stuff like a nap and food. But Elijah needs those things, and God validates those things. God makes it clear that sometimes God's greatest strength and blessing comes through things like, here's a jar of water, here's a loaf of bread, take it back. God gives Elijah strength for his journey by blessing him and strengthening it in those ways. But God also gives Elijah the gift of community. See, Elijah's out there in the middle of the desert, and he's all alone. He's hanging out, and he feels and when the second part of the story part starts, the second part of the story, most of us remember, after he gets done with getting up and going on the strength of that food, he arrives at Korah, the Mount of God. And that's the place where he hides out in the cave, and there's the wind and the, fu and the, and the fire and the earthquake, and God isn't in any of those things. But as soon as he gets to the Mount of God, the first thing he complains to God is he says, Me, I'm alone. I, I'm all alone. Nobody else is left, it's just me. To that, God immediately replies, you're right, Elijah, you're all alone, you and the 7,000 other people who haven't been worshipping the Baals. Oh, and besides that, I'm going to send you to all of these other people who are leaders and helpers who are going to continue this journey with you. And you're going to anoint all of these other people. That's the really great thing about having this reading as opposed to the other one. The other reading has all of these funny names of people you've got to read. Not this one. But you've got to anoint all these other people with the funny names because they're also part of this journey. And part of the way that God blesses and strengthens the journey of Elijah is by giving him the gift of community, by, by showing him that he's not alone in this journey that God calls him to. And maybe the most important thing that God does to bless and strengthen Elijah's journey is to remind him that the journey is bigger than Elijah. It really was not about Elijah winning or losing, or even necessarily knowing where the journey would take him and being smart enough to figure it all out. Because you know that, that's the funny thing when he gets to the Mount of when he gets to the Mount of God to pour up the Mount of God. You know that there's this big windstorm and God's not in the wind. And there's the fire, but God's not in the fire. And there's the earthquake, but God's not in the earthquake. Finally, there's the sound of sheer silence. Or maybe a still small voice. It depends how you translate it in Hebrew. And the voice of God says to Elijah, remember the first thing it says to Elijah? What are you doing here? This is not where you're supposed to be. I've got other things for you to do. Elijah doesn't even know where he's supposed to be going or what he's supposed to be doing. But that's okay. Because finally, it's not really Elijah's journey. It's God's journey. Elijah is called to be on the journey that really is God's journey to draw people closer to him. And it's just really his job to be God's hands, God's voice, God's presence in the lives of people who need it. You know, sometimes, like Elijah, 
we too are really kind of tempted to measure our lives, the journey of our lives, by the numbers of wins and losses that we've had. And so much of life gets measured like that. We're sometimes also tempted to think, well, however I've been doing my life, however I've been leading my, kind of developing my faith, wherever I feel that I've won or I've lost, that's the measure of how well I've done. And when we feel like that, God also wants us, I think, to remember this story of Elijah and to know that, first of all, God knows how we feel and to remember that our journey of faith is finally also not about us, but it's about journeying with God, whether we feel like we're winning or we're losing. And the journey of life and faith that God calls us to be on is also a journey that God blesses and strengthens each and every day, sometimes simply by also providing us with a break. I mean, most of us right now are viscerally aware of how much it's good to have a vacation. Whether you have been on vacation, you're just going on vacation, you know that even if you're involved in something which you find meaningful and important and you love, you need a break. A vacation, a nap, some food, all of those things are sometimes the gifts that God gives us to continue to help us to live forward in the journey of our lives. And like Elijah, we shouldn't dismiss those as all oh, the other stuff that we need. Sometimes those really are the spiritual food that we need and that God gives us to strengthen our journey. God gives us also the blessing and strength of community to live through our journey. Because like Elijah, Sometimes we too get stuck in our journey when we feel alone, even if we kind of cognitively know that's not really what's going on. I know there are other people, but sometimes I feel like I'm alone. And that's why sometimes it's so important for us to be church together, not just to you know, show up on a Sunday morning, but, but to be a community with one another. It isn't that one of us has a secret deep knowledge to tell us we know exactly what God is telling us at exactly this moment. It's not the pastor or anybody else. But, you know, Elijah and his companions, they were not exactly sure where they were supposed to be going, what they were supposed to be doing, or how it was all going to turn out. But because they journeyed together, they were able to work it out with each other. They were able to be God's instruments and guides in each other's lives. And that's the kind of importance of community that God gives us as well. It's the strength and the blessing God gives us to continue our journey of life and faith. And sometimes for us too, the most important thing that God is giving us to strengthen us and help us to kind of move forward is the reminder that finally our journey of faith and life really isn't about us either. It doesn't depend upon us. Maybe the biggest thing that Elijah learned was that his words and his actions even if he thought they didn't matter, even if he thought he had lost, actually could be used by God in ways that blessed and strengthened others, that somehow accomplished God's purposes, and that God could use even his failures in ways that he couldn't possibly imagine. And really, that's the way it is with us as well. There are people who say that it is always the job of Christians to figure out God's purpose for our lives. And sometimes what they mean by that is that there's supposed to be one secret hidden thing, and you're supposed to figure it out and accomplish that. But I think rather, the message of Elijah is that God's call is simply to faithfully be about our journey of faith and life. God's call is to be open each day to being God's hands, God's voice, God's presence in the lives of others who need it. And God's reminder is that we haven't necessarily failed in our purpose when things don't necessarily work out the way we thought they should. And at those moments when we feel like curling up under the broom tree or under our co the covers of our bed and pulling the covers up over our heads, remember, God understands how we feel, and God may let us rest for a while. But in the end, God is also calling us to get up and receive the strength and the blessing God is giving to each and every one of us every day. 
So that when, when and as we experience the blessing that God's providing in our lives, we too will be strengthened so that our journey of faith and life won't be too much for us. <coughs>